Hello, everybody, and welcome along to the second episode of the Reloaded podcast. We are coming off a historic, unforgettable return episode of Loaded this past Sunday night. Dave Bradshaw here. I'm in a good mood after that first episode of Loaded. Also, because Christmas is coming as well. Uh, and joining me in the studio is a man who, in three decades of trying, uh, has yet to earn a single present from Santa Claus, Mr. James R. Kennedy. How are you? All right? Well, I'm very well, but I can't help but notice that you started off this second episode of the Kennedy Rundown with an outright lie, Dave Bradshaw. And again, I I want to know what you're going to get me for Christmas. I know you're playing it coy. I know that you like secrets and surprises, but just hit me with it. What are you getting me? Well, you're going to be very, very surprised if you think I'm getting you anything. But anyway, I haven't got, we haven't got time for your nonsense at the moment because we have an awful lot to get through uh, coming off of this first uh, episode. What an episode it was of Loaded. First of all, we, we've got a lot of other things to talk about. But I just want to hit on a couple of the things we previewed on last week's show, uh, if I can. Um, Martin Kirby, we talked about, well, what's he going to say when he, when he comes out and uh, uh, delivers his post-refuse-to-lose address to the Defiant fans? It turned out he didn't really have anything to say at all. In fact, he just sort of stood there arrogantly for a couple of minutes and then walked out. He did. And, um, you know, it's it's become abundantly clear that Martin Kirby doesn't think he owes anyone an explanation for his actions um, and his transgressions and beating down Joe Hendry after that I quit match and all the rest of it. Obviously doesn't think he, he needs to justify that whatsoever. And you were fuming about this at ringside. You were absolutely furious. I could see it in your eyes. The table was shaking. I was fearing for my own safety, quite frankly. Um, but, you know, Dave, where do you think that... Where, where does a story go now? What's, what's the, what does the future hold for Martin Kirby? Well, I don't know. And I don't. more to the point, I don't know what the point was. I don't know what to, the point was of him having that time. If all he's going to do is stand there, shush the crowd... For how long was he standing out there? Four or five minutes? It was about and, that, yeah. And then, and then, just what do you say? My bad or something? Drops the microphone and leaves. I mean, talk about arrogant. Talk about take like just taking for granted all of those people who've been your curb crawlers, your followers for the past year, two years of your life, and then not even thinking you owe them an explanation and just strutting out like you own the place. I thought it was disgusting. Well, maybe that was. Exactly Kirby's point. Maybe he was sending a message. You know, Newcastle has always been a stronghold for defiant wrestling. Um, and maybe he wanted to send a statement off to those people and say, you know, I don't need to justify anything to you anymore. I'm a new man and I'm going to do big things here in defiant wrestling with or without you. That's the only thing I can think of because, you know, we're pretty much making up our own explanation because, as you said, Martin Kirby had nothing to say other than my bad. So, yeah. It, it was what was striking, by the way, was how how the opinion of the defiant fans towards Kirby has changed, and how how rapidly that has changed. The reception he got in Newcastle, which previously, by the way, Newcastle over all of the cities we visit has been the place I would say that's been most strongly pro Kirby. A lot of his biggest moments in defiant have happened in Newcastle, and that crowd were ready to just rip him apart, given a chance. Well, you see, I would I would like to temper that by saying Newcastle is definitely the drunkest of all the places and the smelliest too. Um, I'm just throwing that out there. If, if anyone listening to this from Newcastle that attends Defiant Wrestling uh, events, if you could buy yourself, if you could find it in your heart to buy your mate, you know, maybe a deodorant gift set or something, you can get them cheap from Boots. It's, it's not a big expense, it's not a big outlay, but it would make all the difference for the hygiene at these events. This is why you don't get any presents. Comments like that, totally unnecessary. Oh, well, I wouldn't say it's unnecessary, personally. I think I can see you screwing up your nose occasionally when those idiots come over and shake your hand. They don't shake that's, mine, but... That's at your aftershave, that's nothing to do with them. Anyway... Um, Another thing that happened, maybe we should have uh, expected that Kirby would behave in the way he did. Certainly what we should have expected, I think, in hindsight, was the dominance of the internet champion. Now, last week we were debating whether this moment, with all the rumours going on about Walter's future, whether he would be able to uh, get, you know, end up victorious against Chris Ridgway and El Fantasmo in that triple threat match that opened loaded on Sunday night. Well, if you're a Walter fan, you shouldn't have worried because Walter... Dominant as ever with the Gajira clutch victorious and still your internet champion. 
He is, and we, we said at the outset of that triple threat match that the only chance Chris Ridgway and El Fantasmo had was to actually team up against Walter. I'll give them credit, they tried it, and it still didn't work. Walter came out of there shining. He is still the defiant internet champion. And I'm going to say it again, and I'll, I'll never tire of saying this. Who in the name of hell is going to beat this big Austrian? He cannot be beaten. I'm telling you. I mean, that was two of the finest athletes in world wrestling in there with Walter. And he still managed to find a way to not only survive, but thrive in that environment. It's downright scary. Well, still undefeated, the internet champion, and begs the question now, uh, given that we still don't know, I I, I haven't heard any more, I don't know if you have about what Walter's future is, but I don't know if or when he's ever going to relinquish that internet title to anyone, because I don't see who's going to beat him. Well, that's that's a salient point. I don't think there's anyone that's going to beat Walter. I think if Walter decides he wants to, he will go to his grave clutching that defiant internet title. Now, the other thing was our main event, of course, from one title to another, the Defiant World title. We were talking last week about this dynamic between Rampage and David Starr, two men who had to team up in Sunday night's main event against John Bad Bones, Klinger and Nathan Cruz. Um, And we were right to question that dynamic, I think, in hindsight, because although Rampage and Starr won the match, very interesting what happened straight afterwards. Starr apparently was about to strike Rampage with Rampage's own world title belt. Rampage caught him red-handed and then uh, hit Star preemptively before Star could do any damage. He did, and you and I questioned the the motives of David Star. I mean, if you're going to go after anyone on planet Earth today that is a world champion, Rampage, he would not be near the top of that list. And it's not because, you know, you don't want to test yourself against the best. I'm not calling David Starr's credibility into question whatsoever. All I'm saying is, Rampage, even when he's been down with injuries, even when he's been ravaged by pain, and even when he's been up against the best that wrestling can throw at him, he somehow, much like Walter, manages to find a way to to hold on to that title. Um, I can only think that David Starr wanted to maybe... You know, we're talking about sending messages. That sure would have been a message if he'd have clocked Rampage with his own title. Um, But at the end of the day, I didn't think this was going to be a team that would work out. I mean, um, John Badbones, Klinger and Nathan Cruz, they had a common goal, and that's just hurting people. Um, Whereas Rampage and David Starr, they're at loggerheads, and there's, there's something brewing here that I'm going to be super interested to see where it goes. But interestingly, they still managed to get the win as well. So for all of their... Uh, all of their distrust of each other, they were able at least bell to bell to keep it together. And I think that speaks to the quality of both of them, right? It does. I, I still can't believe it, to be honest. I thought for sure, um, it, it might have been a bold prediction, but I thought for sure, when you take into account what happened to Klinger at the hands of Rampage previously, he failed to win that defiant title. Um, Nathan Cruz has been upset with the antics of David Starr as well. I thought for sure those two guys would have enough in their tank and then you throw in the, the communication issues, if we're going to call it that, for lack of a better term, between Rampage and David Starr. I thought that Bad Bones and the professional would have the edge. But in the end, I was wrong. And that doesn't happen often. <laughs> Apparently, allegedly, according to you. Anyway, uh, well, I'm sure we're going to hear from Starr uh, and pro- probably from Rampage as well in the very near future uh, about what's going on in, in that relationship as Starr clearly has his eyes Uh, firmly honed in on the Defiant World title. But having talked about all three of those things, those are things we talked about last week. It's good to to recap what happened with all of those three issues on Loaded with Rampage and Star, with Walter, with Martin Kirby. But the first thing I want to really spend some time on as we look ahead uh, to next week's Loaded, this coming Sunday, is the women's division. We haven't really talked about the women's division yet. Um, And one thing that was really interesting to me on this past week's Loaded, was the comments we heard in that video package from B Priestley, the women's champion. Now, Priestley is someone we haven't seen uh, here in, in ring in Defiance since August. She won a match that stacked, if you remember, and then was after the match was uh, assaulted by Lana Austin. Missed a little bit of time, I think a mild concussion. She, she didn't have quite as serious injuries as she might have done, thankfully. And then it's been over in Japan since then, uh, competing for stardom. So we haven't seen B Priestley in, what, four months now. Uh, she's going to be back this coming week 
uh, on Loaded and has uh, laid down a challenge of her own uh, entirely voluntarily, as far as I can tell, to put her title on the line, not just against one opponent, but against five in a women's gauntlet match for the women's title on Loaded. Now, I'm just questioning the wisdom of putting yourself in a situation where you have to beat not just one opponent, but five. Is that overconfidence from our women's champion? It could be overconfidence. It, it could be that B Priestley believes she's in a place right now in her career where she's the champion. She's been jetting off all over the world, making a splash. Maybe she needs to reaffirm her position in Defiant Wrestling. Maybe she needs to let the entire women's roster know, hey, I'm the alpha female. I own this place and I'm going to show you why. That's the only thing I can think of because at the end of the day, Dave, to be honest with you, a lot of people, you could be forgiven for saying this is a little stupid. <laughs> you know, to be honest, to put yourself in this position, I, I mean, we know how competitive the women's division is in Defiant. It's unbelievable mm. at times. I mean, these women will stop at nothing to be the top dog. For B Priestley, this is a huge, huge risk. But, you know, when you look at it, maybe she's been backed into a corner by what's happened with Lana Austin, her, her behaviour. Maybe it's something like that. And she feels, as I say, that she needs to reaffirm that she's on top. Well, talk about Lana Austin. We know that Austin, we now, know, by the way, know the identity of the five women who are going to be in this gauntlet match uh, this coming Sunday. Lana Austin is one of them as you'd expect. And I, I was just wonder. I, I'm trying to get my head around this, the, what, what the logic is of Priestley as well. And I just wonder, whether, more than overconfidence, whether it's a sense on Priestley's part that she does want to get her hands on Austin, obviously, for what Lana Austin did to her at Stacked. But she doesn't want to reward Austin with a one-on-one -on -one title shot, right? So by putting herself in a match where Austin is one of the opponents, but there's four others as well, she gets to kill two birds with one stone, so to speak. She gets to get her revenge on Austin, hopefully, from her perspective. And also, as you say, she gets to reassert her dominance over the whole division while not rewarding Lana Austin with a one-on-one -on -one match. Well, that could be it. And I wouldn't imagine that what Lana Austin has done here in Defiant Wrestling has gone unnoticed by the other women either. So, you know, they'll be wanting to lay down a marker against Austin and show that they're the most viable challenger for B Priestley. So in a way, I'm saying it's stupid, but when you actually flip the coin and you look at the other side, maybe you're right, maybe it's smart from B Priestley, um, you know, because she's not ducking a challenge, but she's saying, hey, Lana, if you want this title, if you want the sweet taste of success and all the riches that come with being Defiant Women's Champion, you're going to have to go through everyone, just as I have in the past. Um, and, and maybe that's exactly what she's doing, but that's a dangerous game because as we've seen, Bradshaw, Lana Austin will stop at nothing here. Well, speaking of having to go through everyone, I mean, you look at the list of people who are in there. Let's let's look at two more names who we now know are going to be part of this gauntlet match. Uh, two former champions. In fact, the two most recent champions prior to B Priestley, Millie McKenzie and Kaylee Ray. Now, a one-on-one -on -one match against either of those two, let alone having four other opponents, would be a pretty big ask for anyone. Millie McKenzie, of course, to much fanfare, was the youngest champion uh, we've ever had. She lost the title... Uh, to Priestley at Built to Destroy in June, having held it since February. So for the first half of 2018, we were all talking about B Pri uh, excuse me, about Millie McKenzie as possibly being a dominant champion along the lines of Walter, who might hold that women's title indefinitely. And I think Priestley, even though she was a former champion herself, surprised some people by being able to defeat Millie McKenzie uh, at Built to Destroy. So I wonder whether, if you're Millie McKenzie, you want to re-establish that aura, that reputation that you did have until June, whereby people were saying this women's division now belongs to Millie McKenzie. And that hasn't been the case. Uh, it, the second half of 2018 hasn't panned out in the way that McKenzie would have liked. I would say definitely, from Millie McKenzie's perspective, it's all about getting back on top of that mountain. And we are coming towards the end of 2018. It's been a big, big year for Millie McKenzie. She's been making a name for herself all over the place, um, drawing the attention of some very, very important people. But 
Defiant Wrestling is still a base for her. It's, it's still a place for where Mackenzie can can prove herself all over again. And what better way to do that than by overcoming five of the, the top women across the planet in wrestling and becoming the new champion? Um, I think if you're Millie McKenzie, your main objective here is get the win and roll on into 2019 with that gold around your waist and, you know, continue this, this, this riding this wave of momentum that you've been riding for the past year because it's been so impressive, Dave. It's been unbelievable to watch the rise of McKenzie. You know, she was, when she came into Defiant Wrestling, she was a little girl, effectively. Now, that's not the case. She's a grown woman, and she's ready to kick ass. And I would definitely not discount her. The same goes for uh, Kaylee Ray as well in this match. Two former champions, they could be the next defiant women's champion. Well, I mean, yeah, Kaylee Ray, you know, you talk about someone having something to prove in Millie McKenzie. Well, Kaylee Ray even more so, because Kaylee lost the title to McKenzie back in February, having been a pretty dominant champion herself until that point. And then McKenzie, uh, sorry, Kaylee Ray rather has... has, has had a couple of rematches against Millie in the in the first half of this year. Couldn't win the title back. She's then tried various other means of winning championships. She, she had a chance at the hardcore title, if you remember. Uh, she was entered uh, in the No Regrets Rumble. Uh, she's part of the Ringmaster Tournament as well, I think. Uh, you know, various opportunities. She's gone after championships that are considered to be men's titles, you know, primarily. And so Kaylee Ray has, ever since losing that women's title has been trying and trying and trying to find any route she can back to championship gold, whatever championship it might be. And now she's back to where, where it all began, if you like, back to the women's title. Big opportunity for Kaylee Ray to uh, finish on a high in a year that hasn't really gone the way she wanted since losing that title back in February. It hasn't. and um, But there's one thing I've learned. I've known Kaylee Ray... Um, or I've watched her work for around a decade now, or the best part of one anyway. And one thing I've learned about Kayleigh Ray is never count her out. Never do it, ever. I mean, you, you touched on it there, Dave. We, we've seen this, this woman go in there against the hardcore champion. We've seen her... We've, seen her do unspeakable things or be willing to go to extreme lengths to prove herself. And gender doesn't come into it for Kaylee Ray, by the way. She's she's someone that can cross um, and compete against the men as well without blinking an eye. Um, and that, that goes for a lot of the women in Defiant Wrestling, but Kaylee Ray's done it more than most. And I definitely, as I said, I wouldn't discount her or Millie McKenzie. Um, Lana Austin, she's so, so dangerous. She's such an ult ultra competitive woman be priestly the champion and we're missing another name in there as well who's almost an underdog if you like roxy and she has everything mm -hmm. to prove as well yeah little miss roxy we know will be part of the match roxy isn't a former champion of course roxy is someone who who's had an on and off career i think with defiant you know she has had a couple of victories it hasn't been a you know a, a total losing streak for for roxy or anything like that but she's yet to really have that signature victory that she needs I'm, I'm not saying that roxy needs to win the women's gauntlet i think given the the caliber of opposition no disrespect to roxy but she's certainly not the favorite to win the match but she does need to do something she needs to prove that she belongs i think at this point in her defiant career she needs something in this match to to cement her position on this women's roster well i'm going to keep this short and sweet and some would say that's like roxy herself roxy has everything to prove she has nothing to lose here, but everything to prove. And uh, lastly, the, the final name, the sixth name in this women's gauntlet match is a name who a week ago we'd never heard of, right? So Kanji. Kanji, the Asian sensation, made her uh, defiant debut on Loaded last Sunday with what well, I think is an underdog victory against Gemini, a much bigger competitor. Uh, looked like she was going to be dominant, Gemini, in that, in that match. Kanji winning with the Kamikaze Kanji, that top rope moonsault to earn herself a place in this Women's Gauntlet Championship match in just her second match in Defiant. Now, again, no one's, no one's expecting Kanji uh, to, to obviously you know, do the impossible here, but we do expect, I think, Kanji to, to show why it is that she deserves to be here, uh, why it is that that wasn't just uh, you know, a, a one-hit wonder, so to speak, last Sunday. Uh, and if Kanji can uh, at least hang in there, for some of this match, then she's going to be in, in pretty good stead going forward. Well, what did we just talk about earlier on? 
B. Priestley taking a huge risk by laying down the gauntlet to all the women in defiant wrestling that want to step up to the plate. And now here you have an unknown commodity from Priestley's perspective, Kanji, coming out of nowhere, picking up a big win in her debut in Defiant Wrestling, and now roaring on to this gauntlet match. And she could create history. She could become the next Defiant Women's Champion. Again, she's an unknown commodity. I would have to say she's my... If, if we're going to rank everyone in this match from favourite to, you know, impossibility to come out on top, she might be towards the bottom of the list, but you never know what can happen in Defiant Wrestling. That's the beauty of it. And again, B. Priestley, this is a huge risk on her part. All right, well, let us know who you think is uh, going to win that women's gauntlet match for the Defiant Women's title. It is going to be the main event of this coming week's Loaded on Sunday night. Uh, tweet us at Defiant Rest, that's Defiant W-R-E-S, uh, and use the hashtag Reloaded to let us know who you think is going to walk out of Sunday night with the women's title. Uh I want to stay on kind of a related subject, if I can, uh, since we're talking about Kanji, one of the great new talents we have here in Defiant. Uh, let's expand this out beyond the women's division, though. But I do want to take a few moments here just to talk about just the incredible depth of new talent that we are uh, seeing now in Defiant and in, you know, on Loaded in particular. Uh, I, I'm thinking of this particularly because we saw another great match between Lucky Kid and Omari. Uh, on this past week's Loaded, both of whom are relatively new. Omari, of course, debuted in the Ringmaster Tournament uh, over the summer. Lucky kid we saw in last year's uh, Pro Wrestling World Cup, but we hadn't seen since then. So he is still relatively new to to Defiant. Two incredible, incredible wrestlers. Lucky kid, of course, tying things up in their series at one win apiece uh, last Sunday night. Um, but when you look at guys like those two, and it's a pretty exciting time here in Defiant, isn't it? It is. I mean, there's been a, a real drive from Defiant Wrestling to, to give young wrestlers in the UK an opportunity to show what they can do. Um, and that extends to Europe as well when you consider Lucky Kid. I mean, I have to say, I was not expecting Lucky Kid to get the victory over Omari. Um, I really, really was not. I've been so impressed by Omari since he came in. I mean, he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with John Badbone's Klinger before. He's just looked smooth in everything he does. He looks so confident. The The audience have taken to Omari. They, they seem to like what he's selling. Um, there's a lot more to come from both these young men, Omari and Kid. And, and God only knows who else is going to be part of this influx because there is a real, real drive to bring fresh talent and fresh blood and, uh, you know, one thing I was thinking of, Dave, maybe not to not to push your buttons, not to, to piss you off, but maybe that's where Martin Kirby feels threatened. Maybe that is why Martin Kirby just feels he has to change and, and evolve because there's all these new faces coming in. And Kirby's not alone, by the way. Everyone else must be looking over their shoulders and saying, Jesus, there's, there's so many great young wrestlers coming up. Do you think there's merit in that point or am I just mad? Well, I don't doubt for a minute that Kirby believes that he's he's having his opportunities stolen from him and instead being gifted to all these newcomers coming in. But, you know, for reasons we won't repeat here because we talked about it in depth last week, but it's just not the case. I mean, Kirby has had opportunity after opportunity. But you do see someone like Omari and you think and you think they are earning everything they, they, they get. You know, another great performance against Lucky Kid this time uh, in defeat, admittedly, but he was also... Excellent in the Ringmaster Tournament, defeated Curtis Chapman, uh, nearly, nearly defeated David Starr as well in the semi-finals of that tournament. He could have gone to the final. I mean, Omari, and, and you look at him, he's that kind of young, hungry talent that you just think, this is a guy who we're, we're watching now in the opening chapters of his career. And three or four years from now, we'll look back when he's a world champion and we'll say, oh yeah, this is where it began. Well, that's it. And the thing about young athletes like Omari they, they don't seem to get depressed or, um, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? They don't seem to, to buy into the idea that they're losers just because they lose one match. And yes, Omari did lose to Lucky Kid, but as you say, in the future, all these experiences are going to stand him in good stead. And I would hesitate to say, or wouldn't hesitate to say rather, that within the next year or two, Omari is the kind of guy who's going to be pushing for championships here in Defiant Wrestling. 
Now, lucky kid as well. I mean, obviously, lucky kid won the match. Let's not forget that. Kid won this match on uh, on Sunday at Loaded. Again, it was the second match between the two of them. Kid, he's harder to get your head around as lucky kid because he is he is he is bizarre. Um, I I do think, and I I've said this before. I I think I said it on commentary on Sunday night. There's I I I think there is a a, a bit of method in this in his madness because I think a lot of a lot of his antics when he's in the ring are designed to take his opponents uh, off their game. He comes from a very strong background, you know. By the way, the the German wrestling scene at the moment is pretty strong, right? You know, it, it's up there with uh, the Irish scene, the British scene. You know, they're, they're one of the hotbeds of European wrestling over there in Germany. And and if you remember when Lucky Kid was with us during that period of the Pro Wrestling World Cup in 2017, he was here with Tarkan Aslan, who's his uh, former tag team partner, his mentor, very very experienced wrestler who's now the heavyweight champion in with our friends in uh, GWF in Germany. So it's not like he's not just some crazy person, lucky kid. You know what I mean? He's come from a background where he is very well trained, not just in the fundamentals of you know, the physical fundamentals of wrestling, but in the psychology of it as well. And and there is a reason that he does all of those crazy things he does in the ring. And you see, when, you know, when he's able to pick up a victory over someone the caliber of Omari, it does make you just think, yeah, you know what? He knows what he's doing, this guy. And this uh, this bizarre persona that he has might actually carry him further than some people think. Whatever works for you works for you. It doesn't have to work for anyone else. And I would say that's a good way to sum up Lucky Kid. When, I mean, you, you saw firsthand, Omari was slightly rattled. You know, maybe not at first, but the longer the match went on, Omari started thinking, what's the deal with this guy? What, You know, I can't figure him out. <laughs> it's just, it was almost at several points during the match, like Lucky Kid was taking Omari's punishment and almost liking it. And I can't imagine for one second that's really the case. But it's all about these mind games that Lucky Kid seems to favour. And he, he's so, so good at doing it. I mean, at some points, even you and I were speechless at ringside, certainly me, you used the word unique to describe this man. I mean, you know him well from, from Germany and, and places like that, but certainly here in Defiant Wrestling, I don't think anyone, if you'd have lined these two guys up and said it's going to be a Mari versus Lucky Kid, Omari got the win the last time, I think people would be saying, okay, it's going to be a clean sweep. Omari's going to get the second win over Lucky Kid, and then he's going to move on to bigger and better things. That didn't happen, and you have to say that's partly down to the psychology, the brilliant psychology of Lucky Kid. I think you're spot on. I think he knew exactly what he was doing. There is more to this young man than meets the eye. Now, if we're talking about psychology and mind games, one other new person here in Defiant who I think we need to talk about is someone who uh, interrupted our broadcast on Sunday with uh, another one of his kind of bizarre video vignettes. Uh, that's Rory Coyle. Now, Coyle, if you remember, is the man who was brought in by Primate, our outgoing general manager, to, um, to counter the threat of Gabriel Kidd. Uh, and that challenge i guess was uh, finally taken up at refused to lose when kid and coil went one on one uh, kid in the end retreated from that match shows you a little bit about uh, how brave gabriel kid is when push comes to shove but in any case rory coil clearly still has uh, unfinished business here in defiant what did you make of that strange video that we saw from coil during sunday's show well, first off, as for the match between Rory Coyle and Gabriel Kidd, I think it says more about Rory Coyle than it does Gabriel Kidd, that Kidd chose not to compete. I think that Rory Coyle is just... I mean, we use the word unique to describe other people. We just did it for Lucky Kidd. Rory Coyle is the very definition of that. He's unhinged as well, by the way. And as for these videos as well, I mean, these are the kind of things that keep me up at night, Dave. Um, and about 50% of that is a grim fascination with watching them. And the other 50% as well is just, what the hell's coming next? I mean, Rory Coyle, I mean, he has that intangible thing about him that you just can't put your finger on. And I think Primate spotted it. You've obviously spotted it. Gabriel Kidd has spotted it. I've spotted it. I can all imagine what the wrestling world thinks of Rory Coyle right now. I mean, I'm going to put it to you. What do you think of the man? Well, it's a different situation to Lucky Kid, right? Whereas Lucky Kid, as I say, I want, I, I suspect, I don't know, I suspect that there is some kind of method to the madness. Whereas with Rory Coyle, I just think he's unhinged. 
I just think I I think Primate has a certain uh, respect for someone who's a little bit out there, a little bit crazy. Because let's face it, there is an element to our uh, general manager's persona that is uh, to his real life personality that is 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 very much the same way. Um, and I don't know. I I think he's brought in someone who he considers dangerous. Primate has done that to try and counter Gabriel Kidd. Um, and that's great, but he's just he's just very I, I think he might be unwell, Rory Coyle. You know, all this use of video, all this all this all these bizarre messages. Uh he, he even calls himself the last true sick boy, right? And I think he is, I think he's sick. And and that that's worrying for anyone who gets in his way. But it's certainly gonna be very interesting to watch uh whatever it is he has planned for these so-called video nasties and he says that well here in defiant we're going to make a lot of movies together uh, that's a little bit chilling it certainly is chilling's the word i mean you used uh, the word unhinged as well i've been using that also rory coyle is just he's a law unto himself i think that's the best way to put it and again as you say i think primate likes that and that, that's, I mean, you talk about having, if, if, you, if you're if you almost a bodyguard figure for Primate, how dangerous do you have to be? Um, but, you know, we're going to see where this develops and how it develops. As for Primate, Dave, he's the outgoing general manager of Defiant mm. Wrestling. And, and that raises quite the question. Who's going to be next? Well, yeah, that's absolutely right. We've only got a couple of minutes left here, but let's finish by talking about that. We do know that with Primate now returning to active competition, he is stepping down from his role uh, as general manager. And that means there is a vacancy at the top. We know we are, or we know that we will find out who Primate's replacement is in the opening moments of Loaded this Sunday. So you absolutely do not want to be late uh, for Sunday night's Loaded because you will find out who is the new boss. I'm going to put you on the spot. Who is it? Well, all I'm going to say is, if I happen to turn up on Loaded this week wearing quite the suit, and that's saying something for me, but if I happen to be wearing a tuxedo or, you know, just a, a really, really fancy suit, then I'm, I'm just going to say, maybe you should start worrying for your future in Defiant. Nah, it's is okay, it... I'm going to say it's not me. I'm not no. the general manager. But, um, no. I was going to say, is this one of those weird self-fulfilling prophecies where you hope that if you say it enough times that they'll just give you the job? Well, they wouldn't is return it... my phone calls or my emails no. or my Facebook messages or my tweets, DMs on Twitter. They wouldn't even reply to me in MySpace for crying out loud. And I don't even think Defiant Wrestling have MySpace. So that was probably some rinky-dink company over in the States that I was messaging, wasting my time. But they wouldn't even message me back, Dave. Well, I'm not surprised. I mean, why on earth? Well, what makes you qualified? What would ever make you qualified to be the general manager of Defiant? Two words. Managerial oh. expertise. I have it in abundance. Yeah, well, that means absolutely nothing. Total jargon. Well, we'll find out anyway, won't we? We will find out on Sunday who is going to be the new general manager of Defiant. Let us know on Twitter who you think is going to be announced as our brand new GM. Uh, tweet us again at Defiant Rest using the hashtag reloaded a uh, couple of notes is before we go don't forget um that we are taping our next set of loaded tapings uh, up in newcastle again on january the 5th uh including the defiant debut of the man that gravity forgot pack will be with us in newcastle uh in the first week of january january 5th uh, up there on tyneside and also on loaded this past week we announced our first pay-per-view of 2019 that one's going to be uh in manchester it's going to be on february the 9th uh, unstoppable is the name of the pay-per-view if you want tickets for that they will be going on sale no they're on sale now in fact as are the loaded tickets for tickets to either of those loaded in newcastle unstoppable in manchester we are defiant.com forward slash tickets uh, for either of those. All right, we're just about out of time. Do you want to shill your Twitter before we go? Oh, you know me so well. Of course I do. You can follow me on Twitter at Top Class Kennedy. And while we're on that subject, I forget her Twitter handle, but you can follow my girlfriend, Megan Fox, as well. Just type in Megan Fox. I'm sure you'll be able to find it, no problem. 
utter, utter fantasist. Uh, you can follow me as well on Twitter at Dave Bradshaw. Uh, and as I said throughout the show, our uh, Defiant Wrestling Twitter is at Defiant Wrest. So check us out on there. Make sure you're following the Defiant YouTube channel throughout the week for updates uh, as we head into Loaded this Sunday. And that is going to do it. So as we head towards the second episode... Uh, of this new run of Loaded. We thank you for joining us on this week's podcast. Uh, we'll be back next week uh, on Reloaded. But in the meantime, uh, for James R. Kennedy, this is Dave Bradshaw saying have an excellent week and we'll see you back here next week on Reloaded.